Hi everyone and welcome to the webinar titled Classroom Ready Projects with the new Arduino Engineering Kit. I'm Dan Doherty and I work in technical marketing at MathWorks and I primarily focus on MATLAB and Simulink hardware programming with a, a specific emphasis on Arduino. And I'm joined by Madhu Govindarajan who's one of the tech leads behind this new Arduino Engineering Kit that we'll be talking about today. So before I begin I'd just like to take care of a couple of quick logistical items. If you experience any problems hearing the audio or seeing the presentation, please use the chat tab and correspond with, with the webinar host that way. If you have questions about the webinar content, please post those to the Q&A panel and we'll do our best to answer all those at the end of the session. So in total, the presentation should last about 25 to 30 minutes and then we'll, we'll get into the Q&A. So before getting into the kit itself, I just want to set some context by summarizing some of the key themes that I personally hear over and over from professors when I ask them about sort of their teaching goals. And they all, they all say it in different ways, but in general it boils down to three main things. So one, they want to prepare their students for their future careers. Two, they want to incorporate the latest technology into their curriculum. And three, of course, they want to keep their students motivated and engaged so they you know, don't move off to another department. But the challenge with most people is that educators have very limited time and resources. So it's much easier said than done to, to effectively incorporate all of these desires. And during this webinar, we're going to take a look at how the new Arduino Engineering Kit um, helps address these things that are so important to educators. So let's start with what is the kit. So in a nutshell, the Arduino Engineering Kit includes an Arduino board and all of the electronics and mechanical components and basically everything that you, that you need to create the, the three projects that you see pictured here. So there's a self-balancing motorcycle, a mobile rover, and a drawing robot. And all of the components in the kit are neatly organized and packaged inside this portable plastic container, which you actually saw on the previous slide. Um, in addition to the, the physical components, the kit also includes access to online learning materials that show users how to program the projects with MATLAB and Simulink, and also a one-year individual user license of MATLAB, Simulink, and other add-on products that are used um, to program the projects. Just a, a quick note related to that license. So the license is included in the kit at no extra cost. So for those of you that have an existing MATLAB or Simulink license, maybe you're at a university with a uh, academic site license, you wouldn't be paying a premium um, for something that you already have. So the, the cost is not incorporated into the kit. So the kit can be purchased directly from Arduino on their online store or through select Arduino distributors. So here's a quick overview of the three projects, and Madhu is going to get into more detail shortly. Uh, so the first is the self-balancing motorcycle, which basically drives around, can handle different terrain, and it remains upright using an inertial wheel for balance. So basically there's a, a PID controller that adjusts the speed of the inertial wheel in order to main <coughs> excuse me, maintain the balance. And it uses tilt data from an IMU sensor that's mounted on the, the bottom of the motorcycle. The second project is the mobile rover, which navigates between reference points and, and moves objects around with that forklift that you see there. And this project is more the, the sort of the robotics example. So it covers core robotic con concepts such as, you know, how differential drive robots work, how to control their movement. Also talks about how to use localization to track their position. And the final project is the drawing robot. And this one takes a reference drawing and duplicates it on a whiteboard. So this one uses lots of you know, math and trigonometry and kinematics, image processing and so forth to determine the trajectory that the marker needs to follow and then it goes ahead and replicates the drawing on a whiteboard. So as you can see from the, the icons on the left hand side, the drawing robot project is entirely MATLAB based, the motorcycle project is entirely Simulink based, and the, the rover uses some of each, though it's primarily a, a Simulink based project. Again, Madhu is going to show these in more detail, including the underlying MATLAB and Simulink programs in just a few minutes. Um, before doing that, I'd like to talk for a, a couple of minutes about the kit's learning materials. So as I mentioned, along with the physical projects, the kit also provides a pretty comprehensive set of learning materials that are offered through um, Arduino's online platform. So if I open this up, let's see. You'll see there are a total of six chapters. So there's an introduction, getting started, concepts, and then there's a chapter associated with each of the three projects. So basically chapter one provides a, a short introduction to the kit 
including what are the components that are included in the box, you know, what are the overall learning objectives, and also gives a brief summary of the three projects themselves. Chapter two includes getting started guides for the tools that are used in the kit, specifically Arduino, MATLAB, and Simulink. So if we actually open up this chapter, you can see on the left-hand side, the Arduino getting started, MATLAB getting started, Simulink getting started. If we poke into the MATLAB getting started, it, it basically includes a, a very comprehensive introduction to MATLAB. So it talks about everything from you know navigating through the MATLAB desktop, to entering MATLAB commands and creating variables and vectors, um, moves on to using built-in functions that are included with MATLAB, um, plotting, and eventually it introduces how to communicate with Arduino and other external devices in MATLAB. So it's it's you know a very good foundation for people who have never used MATLAB to to kind of get. Um, a baseline level of knowledge so that they can then work with the projects. Likewise, there's a similar uh, section for Simulink. So again, this section includes everything from how to open a Simulink and you know create a Simulink model and, and construct models based on the built-in blocks that are included in Simulink. And if I continue scrolling, it eventually um, transitions to well, simulating a model and then moves to um, running Simulink models on Arduino. And basically that'll introduce how to kind of deploy the algorithm that you build in Simulink onto the Arduino for, for standalone execution there. Uh, again, the goal is really to provide users with zero MATLAB or Simulink knowledge, the foundation that they'll need in order to complete the projects. So moving back to the top level chapters, uh, another pretty important and, and impressive section is the concepts. And so this basically provides information about some of the important concepts that relate to the projects. For example, if you go to the controlling motors chapter, it talks about you know what are DC motors, how do they work. Um, this gives all kinds of interesting and useful information so that students understand uh, the hardware that's used in the kit. Likewise, um, encoders that are also used pretty heavily in these projects, how do those work, and servo motors and so forth. Also a section on the different sensors that are in, used in the kit, so ultrasonic sensors. Um, and inertial measurement units, I think there's also a, a section on hall sensors and so forth. So you can see that the information is really thorough, well illustrated, and it's gonna, again, give students the knowledge they need to work with the projects. And the remaining chapters, as I mentioned earlier, guide the users through the process of using MATLAB and Simulink to program the projects. Just to give a quick sense of how they're structured, I'll go ahead and open the chapter for the motorcycle. So you see on the left-hand side, the overall project is broken down into a series of lessons that sort of incrementally build on one another and introduce concepts. Uh, in the motorcycle example, we kind of start by showing how you can simulate the, mo the motorcycle dynamics in Simulink. Um, and then it moves on to uh, developing your controller and actually deploying that controller onto the physical hardware. And it finishes up, as do all of the projects, with a final challenge where users can basically apply what they've learned to extend the project. So in this case, we ask them to program the motorcycle to execute a coordinated banked turn. But, you know, professors or, or instructors could come up with whatever final challenge they want in this case. Okay, so that kind of gives an overview of the learning materials. And before handing over to Madhu to demo the projects, let me just quickly talk about how MATLAB and Simulink actually work with Arduino. So with the MATLAB workflow, it's really around interactively reading data from sensors and analyzing and visualizing data and also actuating external devices such as motors and lights and so forth. So MATLAB's really great for projects that incorporate algorithms for things like image processing and optimization, machine learning, um, visualizing data, and so forth. So with, with the MATLAB workflow, the processing actually happens on the computer running MATLAB, so it's not happening directly on the Arduino board. Um, so it enables you to incorporate more complex and resource-intensive computations. Simulink, on the other hand, provides a, a graphical block diagram-based environment 
where you can model and simulate your projects and also develop algorithms that you can embed directly onto the Arduino. So that's the difference here is that you're generating code from your algorithm and then the code runs directly on the Arduino. Um, so with the Simulink workflow, users often start by modeling their system in Simulink, exploring the behavior through simulation, and then ultimately deploying the algorithms to the actual physical hardware. Okay. So that's just a, a bit of a preview, and with that, I will hand things over to Madhu, who will show the, the projects in more detail. Thanks, Dan. For all three of these demos, I'm going to first show a quick video of the project in action. Then I'll talk a little bit about how the project itself works, and then I'll wrap up each project with a little in-product demonstration. What we see here is the controller eliminating external disturbances in the simulation model. Then the controller is deployed to the actual motorcycle to test its performance. So how does this motorcycle balance itself? It has an IMU shield on the base that tells the Arduino how much the motorcycle is leaning. The Arduino then controls the inertia wheel, speed and direction to provide a counter torque to the motorcycle. The motorcycle can also move forward using the DC motor connected to the rear wheel and steer using the servo connected to the handlebar. So I've broken down the whole project into four major tasks. First, the students learn about the governing equations of a motorcycle and understand how it relates to the simulation model. Next, they learn how to design a controller that can balance the motorcycle in place in the simulation world. Now let's go to MATLAB to see the demo in action. First, I wanted to show how to get the files that you need for all three projects. You go to Add-ons and click on Get Add-ons. In the Add-ons Explorer that opens up, you can search for the Arduino Engineering Kit and download and install the hardware support and project files that you need. When you download the project files, you get these folders where all the files needed for each project are made available inside a separate folder. This model shows the controller that the students have designed to balance the motorcycle in place. At a high level, the controller is attempting to eliminate any external disturbances coming into the plant model. The controller being used is a PD controller, and now I'm going to run this model to show the controller in action. When you run this model, Mechanics Explorer opens up. This helps you visualize the motorcycle as the controller and the external disturbances are still acting on it. You can use the scroll bar and speed control to understand how the system is behaving. You will notice in the first few seconds here, the controller eliminates the initial offset and brings it back to the vertical position very quickly. To understand details on how the controller is performing, we need to take a closer look at the lean angle of the motorcycle. From this graph, you can see that the angle comes down to zero in less than one second. I'm going to show a little bit of the tuning process to show how the students got here. I'm going to make this a pure P controller at first and press run. As you can see here, this controller is giving an oscillatory behavior. Let's see how a PD controller would work. One cool feature here is that you can compare simulations from different runs. In our case, we can now compare the P controller and the PD controller side by side. Using these tools, along with the learning material, students learn how to design a controller that can balance the motorcycle in place. Now let's go back to the slides. Once they have learned how to balance the motorcycle in the simulation world, they will learn how to balance the motorcycle in the real world, both in place and while it is moving. Before I show the next demo, I wanted to tell you why simulation was important in this project. We saw that a pure P controller could make the system unstable. Imagine finding that out on the real motorcycle. Either the motorcycle will fall down and could break, or worse, we could just burn out the motor that is controlling the inertia wheel. So let's go to MATLAB and see how to balance the motorcycle. 
In this model, the IMU block brings in real-world theta and theta dot signals to the controller, which then sends the appropriate torque command to the inertia wheel DC motor. This is the final controller that the students have designed at the end of one of the exercises. Let's focus on the bottom part here. As we are working with real hardware, it is always good practice to build safety mechanisms. For instance, you don't want to run the inertia wheel when the IMU sensor is not calibrated, or if the battery is too low, or if the inertia wheel speed is too high. This model is set to work in external mode. What this allows you to do is control the code that is running on the Arduino from within Simulink. You can tune the parameters like P and D and immediately observe what the impact is on the code that is running on the hardware itself. This is how students design their final PD controller. To understand more, I have a webcam that is connected to my PC. So on the screen, you can see the theta and the theta dot signal as I move the motorcycle. And you can see the torque command that is being sent to the motorcycle as well. And you can see the PD terms here of what the controller thinks it should be. So I'm going to get the motorcycle to balance itself. And you can see that the kickstand is not being used by the motorcycle at all when it is balancing properly. External mode is really useful because you see the real-time information on how the controller is performing. Seeing the control terms and theta side by side takes some of the pain away from tuning controllers. In the subsequent exercises, they build on top of this and learn how to balance while the motorcycle is moving. This is the model that students have built that shows them how to control the rear wheel and the handlebar on the actual motorcycle itself. The final challenge for the students is to put all of these learnings into action and balance the motorcycle while it is turning. Now let's go back to the slides. Next, let's talk about the mobile rover project from this kit. In this video, we're seeing how the real world rover compares against the simulation one as it is going through different waypoints to pick up and drop off the object at the final destination. So how does this whole thing work? The Arduino and the motor carrier control the DC motor and the servo motor that is connected to the forklift so that it can pick up and drop off the object. But how does the rover know where it is located inside of the arena that we saw? The kit has a webcam that you can place on top of a table or stool or something so that it overlooks the arena like this. Then the image processing algorithm uses the three colored dots on top of the rover to locate it inside the arena. And the localization algorithm gives the location and heading of the rover and the location of the object, which is then used by the rover to plan its own path and move through. Let's take a look at the rover project tasks. The students learn basics of differential drive robots and use simulation to understand how the robot would behave when wheel speeds are provided as input. Here, the inputs make the robot move in a straight line and then turn 90 degrees. Over a few exercises, students learn how to tune a PID controller using external mode just like we saw in the previous demo. The next task would be to make your rover follow a sequence of waypoints. The path planning algorithm as we saw in the video is very simple. You turn to the next waypoint and move in a straight line till you get to that point. So let's go to MATLAB to see this in action. In this model, the assumption is that the rover knows the waypoints ahead of time from the image processing algorithm. The starting point of the rover is denoted by the first row here in the waypoints block. The second row denotes the location of the object itself, and the last denotes the final destination. All of these values are input in centimeters, and then they are passed on to the path planning algorithm, which then outputs the desired forward velocity and rate of rotation of the rover. Now I'm going to open the state flow chart. It has what we call states and transitions. In the context of this project itself, you can think of states as the rover's operating condition and transitions as logical questions, such as have I reached the desired distance? Have I reached the desired angle? And so on. The rover moves from one state to another only when the decision holds true.
So imagine the path planning algorithm that I just mentioned. We want the rover to turn to the next waypoint. So inside the turn state, it calculates the angle first on how much it should rotate so that it can look right at the next waypoint. And then it turns that much. Once it has reached that, it goes to the move forward state where it goes certain amount of distance until it reaches the next waypoint. It then does this in a loop until all the waypoints are reached and it is at the final destination. With state flow, you can easily program state logic and you get to see an animation of your system going through these states. The advantage of simulation here is that you get to go through this process several times for different test scenarios and then you can catch any logical errors that you might have made while developing your algorithm. Let's see the hardware model for this. In this model, the simulation subsystem is replaced by driver blocks that communicate with the DC motors. We're bringing in encoder data and converting it into distance and angle that the path logic needs. This chart is slightly different from what we saw in the previous one. The turn state is still the same, but we have to control the forklift differently to pick up and drop off the object. Here, the moving forward state is broken down into sub-states where you move a certain distance and then stop the rover and drop the forklift, move the remaining distance to reach the next waypoint, and then stop and pick up the object and then go back to the turn state. With that, we've seen how the rover follows the sequence of waypoints in both simulation and the real world. So let's go back to the slides. As the last task, the students learn how to use the localization algorithm to track the rover and control it from a simulink model. All of this is done over Wi-Fi so that the rover can now go pick up the object from any starting location. Next, let's take a look at the drawing robot project. The drawing robot here is drawing the MathWorks company logo, which is shown on the left. Notice how the marker is now going to go off the board as it finishes that line segment. It then moves on to the next and then draws the line segment again. So how is the drawing robot working? On the top corners of the board, we have a pulley mechanism from where the entire drawing robot is suspended. The DC motors are controlled appropriately to draw each and every point on the image and the servo motor is used to take the pen off the board and put it back on whenever needed. The first task in this project is to establish a coordinate system for the whiteboard. You take an image like the MATLAB logo that we saw and reduce it down to X and Y points using this coordinate system so that the drawing robot can go to those points and draw the actual image itself. The students then learn how to control the DC motors to move to specific points so that they can draw predefined images and images from the webcam. Let's go to MATLAB to see how this is done. In the last two projects, we saw Simulink being used extensively. And in this project, it only uses MATLAB. So what we see here is a live script. It shows the code and the output side by side. Now let's see how the robot drew the MathWorks logo on that video. First, we load the image into MATLAB, and then we use image processing routines to extract a thin line from this image. A real cool feature is that when you click on the output, it shows which line of code generated that output and vice versa. In the next section, we extract all the pixels from the image and the algorithm finds out points that are within a certain distance from each other. This is then used by the algorithm to know which portions of the image form a line segment. Here, the plot shows four different colors, which means that the algorithm thinks these are four line segments. We as human beings can understand that the marker does not have to come off the board to move from this line segment to this one. The next section of code helps the algorithm find such connected segments. Why is this important? Imagine a much more complicated image with hundreds of line segments. You don't want your robot to pick up the pen and drop it every time it finishes a line segment. The final step here is to make the robot draw it on the whiteboard. This is the function that takes care of that.
this is the section where MATLAB connects to Arduino and the motors. And then here we're sending the appropriate commands to draw connected line segments and pick up the marker off the whiteboard and move to subsequent line segments till it finishes drawing every line segment. To draw pictures from webcam images, instead of loading existing images, you just bring in images from the webcam using built-in functions. So that is a brief overview of all the three projects. Now I'm going to turn things to Dan, who will wrap up the presentation. Thanks, Madhu. So what Madhu just showed was a summary of what I'll call the baseline programs that are included with the kit. And these do a really nice job of getting users up and running with the projects. But of course, there's going to be endless opportunities to extend the projects to perform other tasks. Uh, as one example, a user program that draw bot to, to draw a nice portrait of a deer. Another user program, the Rover, so that you can control its movement using your phone. So there's actually a video of this one that we can take a quick look at. So you can see the, the user actually used Simulink to build a simple Android app that communicates with the Rover over Wi-Fi and controls its movement based on the orientation data from the phone. So when you tilt the phone forward, um, you see the Rover drives forward and there's some other widgets on the app that control its movement in other ways. So pretty neat application example. And Another example is a user that used reinforcement learning to balance the motorcycle instead of using the, the base PID controller that are in the learning materials. So, you know, there's a lot of different examples like this. These are just a few that I thought were interesting, but again, endless opportunities to extend the built-in projects. With that said, let's come back to the original slide and see how the Arduino Engineering Kit addresses some of those things we talked about earlier that are so important to professors. So, you know, one thing people want to do, prepare students for careers, of course. So in terms of preparing students, the kit gives them hands-on experience working with microcontrollers and various connected hardware, uh, you know, motors, different sensors, which is clearly a core competency for today's engineer. It also gives them experience working with MATLAB and Simulink, as well as the concept of model-based design that Madhu showed um, during the projects where you kind of start with the simulation and, and learn about your algorithm and then target the hardware later. And these are all concepts that are used extensively in industry. So it's certainly going to prepare your students there. In terms of incorporating the latest technology, the kit introduces key concepts around smart and autonomous and connected systems, and of course, embedded algorithms, uh, which are all very important. And in terms of keeping students motivated and engaged, the kit's projects were originally selected not only because they cover the right engineering topics, but also because they're fun and they're interactive and they give users a lot of opportunity to extend them. So, you know, I've had experience watching other math workers and students alike work with the projects, and I can assure you that they all have a fun time and um, learn a lot along the way and definitely don't get bored. Finally, in terms of limited time and resources, the kit really helps professors avoid hassles and challenges around, you know, of course, ensuring students have the required background knowledge in order to, to use the projects. So remember the engineering kit includes the, the introduction section where it kind of gives the baseline MATLAB Simulink knowledge as well as a, a concepts chapter that you know, teaches them the relevant concepts that are used in the kit. So, you know, it really provides the foundation that students are going to need to work with the projects. And of course, it helps student professors avoid the hassle related to hardware shopping and developing and maintaining curriculum, which are extremely time consuming. Okay, so in terms of resources, the main point that I want to make here is really that, that MathWorks and Arduino are extremely committed to supporting this kit and supporting you and making sure that you're successful. If you have any questions at all or technical questions or want to evaluate the kit um, for potential use in your course, just email engkit at arduino.cc and someone will respond very promptly. And there's also a user forum specifically for those of you who already may have the kit and want to get started uh, or get ideas. You can engage with fellow users, uh, ask questions, get ideas from them. And finally, I just wanted to mention there's a, a YouTube channel where we post videos of the projects in action. So it's just called Arduino Engineering Kit Videos. I encourage you to visit there and you know see some of the cool things people are doing with the kit.
So with that, let's transition to the Q&A. Again, please post any questions to the Q&A panel, which is indicated by the question mark in your WebEx panel at the top of the screen. And we'll just take a few moments to review these, and then we'll come back online to answer them.